Business Brain, episode 499 for Wednesday, November 8th, 2023. Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain, the show, well, by for and about entrepreneurs, but also the show where you send in some ideas, we come up with ideas. And we crunch through them together so that we can each tune our business brains each and every episode and keep on living that charmed life. Sponsors for this episode include Miro.com slash podcast, where you're going to go and you get your first three Miro boards are free forever when you sign up there. And then also Shopify.com slash business brain, where you can go sign up for your $1 per month trial. You're going to learn more about this in a little bit here during the episode For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you, Dave? I'm good. I'm good. Good. Yeah. Rocking and rolling here. Just, you know, cranking along, being productive, doing my thing. Yes, that's it. Being productive. I posted on the X platform the other day that being busy was nothing to brag about. Oh, I I like that. Oh. Yeah. And I was I was inspired by your comment about how, you know, we're not busy. We, we don't use that word. We're productive and, and it allows it's it reframes what you're working on because because the world rewards output, right? Not input. Well, I, I don't I mean, in the end, yes, it does yes. reward output. However, there are a lot of people in like middle management jobs. And I realize I'm offending a lot of people <laughs> who are listening here, but but it, it, it it's not necessarily your fault. There are a lot of middle management jobs that are rewarded and, and, and like lower jobs too, you know, yeah, like, yeah. like, like not middle management, but, but, you know, entry level jobs who are rewarded with being busy. I remember from my time in corporate America <sighs> that I, like, I remember this one guy who was our uh, head of like tech support. I wasn't there at, at Citibank. This was, I wasn't there doing tech support. I was doing some other stuff that he was the head of tech support for our department. And I remember he hired, okay. hired a new guy. And he told this guy, the new guy was my brother. He hired him for the summer. And uh, my brother came in and my brother was fairly skilled and, you know, was able to get stuff done and was really quick about it. And so, you know, he, he got a list from his new boss and went and did all the stuff and came back, you know, four hours later. And the guy's like, uh, I don't have anything else for you right now. And, you know, he's like, but uh, this should have taken you three days. You got to learn how to make the work yeah. last. Yeah, that's brutal. And so, it was like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, and he was, the problem was he was right. Like, th- he, and it wasn't his choice that he was in a position where he and the person working for him needed to make the work last. It was like th- just the, the function of the way that bureaucracy works. And I don't think it's changed much. It might have. I, I haven't been in corporate America in decades because I couldn't stand Gosh, it so. because of yeah. that reason, right? Like that was a big part of why I was like, no, I just, let's just be as efficient as we can all the time. And that was not rewarded there at at all. It was, well, we got to keep our friends happy. We got to, you know, buddy deals are important and make the work last. Keep yourself busy. You don't want anybody to look like you're not doing something. It's like, shoot, man, if I'm not doing something, I want to be on the beach. Yeah. That's that's crazy. If if I don't have anything to do, I either want to find something to do or I want to be on the beach. And when you're being paid dollars per hour, which most salary positions are also just, you know, a a flat dollars per hour arrangement. And yes, it moves around a little bit, but it's essentially worked out that way. Then, and I know I just offended everybody. So thank you for listening to 498.2 episodes of Business Brain. And now it's over. But yes, I don't. Speaking of productivity. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Segwaying into that. So last week we launched this productivity course and we've been kind of looking at some things and I, as we discussed before the show um, we want to build in public and kind of talk about what works and what doesn't. And um, so uh, let's, let's jump in and talk about how things went with the course. Uh, so in, far uh, it sucks. No, it, that's not entirely <laughs> true. Um, no, not, not that's correct. That's no, correct. we have had no sales of the course. So that's right. when you go to businessbraincourses.com slash free, you can take the first two days of this course that we put together for, guess what? Free. That's what that means, right? So businessbraincourses.com slash free, and you can go take it for free. And I'm saying this multiple times because I want you to do that. 
Yeah. Of the we people, love your, some more feedback. Yeah, of the people who have visited businessbraincourses.com slash free, 28% of you have signed up for the course. Now, that's a good number. That's a great conversion. Great number, yes. Except my guess is no one visited that by accident. So my question is, my first question, I have many, is if you went and visited businessbraincourses.com slash free, which I'm guessing you learned about in the show because it's the only place we've published it really. Yeah. Why didn't you then go sign up for the course? Why, why is it only 28%? Why isn't it 88%? <laughs> right? Like, yeah. well, so, I, but I, I want to know the answer. This isn't a rhetorical question. I yes. like feedback at businessbrain.show. Let us know what about that page did not entice you, did not make it easy. What friction was there that made it such that you chose I'll do this later or never. Very important. And it would be really helpful for us. And we're going to, you know, fine tune this thing. Um, one of the comments that we did get from uh, a couple of folks was that they really enjoyed how the course takes place in your mail. You don't have to l click log into a website. You don't you have, never to, have to leave your inbox, the video, the audio, all the text, everything just comes through to your email each day and you can sit through the, the lesson and, and do your thing there. And, um, I thought that was interesting that we got that feedback. Um, so yeah, so it's, you know, we're, we're going to figure this out. Yeah. And that, so we so can, that's the know. first question. The second part I have is why, and, and it's okay that you didn't sign up for the paid version of the course, but why was the, were the first two days more than enough and you have lots to, to do from, from that and, and your life has changed and you didn't need more or was it, not worth it at all. And you couldn't imagine paying for five more days of this crap, right? Like let us know feedback yeah. at businessbrain.show. Cause I, and for those, know. Yeah, yeah. And for those folks that did sign up, uh, that 28%, we're going to reach out to you, uh, not in an automated fashion. It'll be coming from, you know, one of us and, uh, we'll ask you a couple of questions. We may have a survey for you to click maybe and be entered to win something. Uh, but we just want to get your, uh, your feedback so we can continue to make things better. All right. First up, we are featuring a game changing tool. That's revamping the way savvy business professionals collaborate. Meet our sponsor Miro M I R O. Imagine running workshops or meetings where engagement isn't just a goal. It's part of the system with Miro. You're not just sharing ideas, you're interacting in real time, whether it's a high stakes client workshop or a team huddle. Picture this real time feedback with lively discussions powered by Miro's built in voting and funky elevator music timers to keep ideas fresh and focused. But hey, it's not all about synchronicity. Miro knows the hustle doesn't always sync calendars, so you can share asynchronous updates, new concepts, and plan with your customers without the calendar chaos. Miro breaks down the barriers, enabling seamless communication anytime, anywhere. And for those who've suffered through the slide after slide of snooze-inducing presentations, Miro steps in as your creative savior. With dynamic frame and slides functionalities, it's not just a whiteboard it's a storyboard where your pitches come to win. From mind maps to flowcharts, Miro's got a vault of over a thousand templates ready to kickstart your next big idea. And here's the clincher, folks. Your first three Miro boards are free forever when you sign up. That's right, free forever. Start revolutionizing the way you work today. Just head over to Miro.com slash podcast and step into the future of collaboration. Again, that's M I R O dot com slash podcast and our thanks to Miro for sponsoring this episode. A few years ago, I started another business with some partners where we're delivering content and other stuff to our users. But when we started it, having an online store was the farthest thing from our minds. Well, now we're selling t-shirts and hats and all kinds of other stuff. And it's so easy all because I decided to use our sponsor Shopify. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business from the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to, did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify's there to help you grow. Whether you're selling shipping supplies or promoting productivity programs, ah, Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all in one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. 
Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout up to 36% better compared to other leading commerce platforms. I really mean it. Shopify made it so easy. We decided at a staff meeting one morning that we wanted to add merch and stuff to the site. By mid-afternoon, we were finished. It was ready to roll. In fact, it had rolled. We were taking our first order before we went to sleep that night. No matter how big you want to grow, Shopify gives you everything you need to take control and take your business to the next level. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash businessbrain, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash businessbrain now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash businessbrain. And our thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this episode. So Shannon, I, uh, I know we talked about like AI in, in, in the new current use of the term, uh, I don't know, a few months ago, maybe six months yeah. ago after we started really sort of learning how mainly with chat GPT to, to sort of do some of this stuff. And I, I think it's good to revisit this because there have been, well, this week there were some major announcements from open AI, the company that makes chat GPT, but also it's just evolved in general, both in terms of the tech, but also in terms of our, and I'm, I'm talking about not just you and me individually, but like as a people, our collective understanding of what things we can get done with this. And so I, I, I wanted to bring yeah. this back up, not only to share what, what you and I have been doing, but also to rekindle the conversation and make sure we're hearing from all of you feedback at businessbrain.show about how you're using AI in these ways. Uh, one of the the big ones for me recently has been that OpenAI added Dolly 3, D-A-L-L-E version 3, to ChatGPT. Dolly is their, I think it might be, might be one of the first engines that I used a couple of years ago for image generation. And it was not great initially. But now with Dolly 3, it's super easy. In fact, if you go look at which episode of Mac Geek Gab was it? Uh, Mac uh, Geek Gab uh, 1006. Yeah. yeah. I'll put a link in the show notes to it. Uh, we talked during the show. It was me and and two of my co-hosts, Pilot Pete and Adam Christensen. We were talking, you know, we did our normal thing. We were answering people's questions and sharing quick tips. And for whatever reason, the phrase like a caveman came up a few times. Probably we were talking about you know, well, you could do it the new way or like a caveman, you could do it the old way. And, uh, and because it came up enough, I thought, well, that's a perfect title for the episode. We kind of title our episodes that way it works for us, uh, on that show. And so I thought, well, wouldn't it be great to have three cavemen using MacBooks uh, as the episode image? So I went into Dolly three and I said, please make me an image of a drawing. I, I specified that I wanted a drawing of three cavemen using MacBooks and and make it in the 3000 pixel wide by 2000 pixel tall orientation. Cause I know that that fits into our template that I use to make our images for the podcast. And that was it. Like, and the image that the you result, see, the results are amazing is what you get. Like it, yeah. it, it's amazing. And it took, uh, it took me longer to explain it to you now than it took for Dolly to generate the image that you see live on the site and as part of the the thing it was you know 30 seconds maybe for it to yeah, spit that out i was like okay great i'm done yeah yep. and i and i think it's uh not only is it uh our opportunity as business owners and entrepreneurs to f use these tools and to you know uh embrace them but it, it it's our responsibility because we're always uh, you know usually embracing change and uh making decisions trying to do things out and th this is just one more thing we need to learn and help spread the word out and help talk to people about it. Um, one of the, you know, so open AI, they had their, they're having their convention this weekend or, uh, and pretty soon, if you're a paid, if you have the plus version, uh, you'll be able to create your own GPT, uh, teaching it to answer you with certain, you know, what any kind of data in a specific manner. And you can basically create your own assistant. You don't need to have, don't have to know how to program it or anything. And they have some good example uh, samples up there on their site. One of them, which I used uh, recently is the data analysis GPT. Okay. That basically 
you can upload any spreadsheet and then just ask the analysis GPT questions about the data, uh, as well as, hey, I want a chart. I want you to show if you, you know, upload uh, sales over a certain time period and you've got products listed and this kind of thing. You can create a myriad of visual uh, charts and graphs that give you back data. It's it, it, it's amazing. Um, another one that I really like is called the negotiator that helps you, you know, you can enter in, I'm going through this negotiation or I'm trying to buy this thing. I have this issue and the GPT will come, come back, help advocate for your side of the equation and teach you to be a better negotiator. You know, it's really uh, amazing. Really? And I think that, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's nuts. They, I, they're kind of doing like do not pay.com is an AI that yeah, yeah. started with just parking tickets getting people out of parking tickets. Now it does all kinds of, lead. they call it your AI lawyer. Yeah, uh, sure. Similar, similar kind of thing. But if you just go to, uh, we'll, we'll put it in, in the notes. So, cause it's a little bit long, but yep. uh, open AI, if you log into chat GPT and click the explore button, okay. you'll find all these new, new GPTs that are maybe some are new, some are not. Sure. Sure. Uh, another one I'm sure if you have kids is called math mentor. I help parents help their kids with math. Need a 9 p.m. refresher on geometry proofs? I'm here for you. Uh, I could have used that when my kids were in high school. Uh, it would be, it would have been amazing. But wow. this is, and, and OpenAI has announced a, a, a GPT app store. So yeah. as people create more of these GPT apps, you're going to be able to, you know, get access to them and you can even put your own uh, GPT apps up on the app store. You know, we and keep saying GPT. Amazing. I want to make sure people, and I, I know m most of us listening have probably at least played with this a little bit. Um, the, the, the GPT stands for generative pre-trained transformer. The generative part is the thing where it's not, like a it's it, unlike a search engine which simply shows you things that already exist the gpt engines will generate a response based on data they have okay that so that's the generative part pre-trained means it's trained with a set of data and now i think gpt4 is up to like april of this year they've got you know a data set that, that yeah. comes that far so that's the generative pre-trained part that makes sense the transformer means that you as the uh, user with the, uh, with the, you know, inner interfacing with the chat engine can tell it to change its answer answers, transform its answers where it, I mean, you could do it with an image and say, okay, this is great, but change one guy's hair to be blonde. Okay, yeah. great. No, like no problem. It can, you're having a, an ongoing conversation. It's not just generate me a picture of cavemen with MacBooks. And if it's not what you want, you have to start again and say, oh, crap, generate me a picture of cavemen with MacBooks with one of them. It has blonde. Hair. No, you don't have to do that. You just say, all right, take what you've already told me or given yeah, me if it's threaded, image. right? Yeah, yeah, it's threaded. And so that's the transformative part of it. And I think it's important for us all to remember what that GPT stands for, because it's easy to forget that, oh, wait, I, I get to manipulate these responses. It's like I'm working this is why we call it AI. It's like you're working with a human, right? Yeah. It's like it understands yep. what you're saying. Yep. Uh, yeah. I mentioned to you, Dave, before we started, I'm working with a coach for a new business that um, trying to get off the ground. And on one of our calls uh, last week, he had uh, a chat GPT open and was just feeding it our text at transcription as we were having this meeting and, yep. and asking questions of it as we went back and forth. And it was like having a third person really listening into the conversations and making suggestions. And it, it, it wasn't that we were taking, oh yeah, I'm asking you the question. You just give me the answer. It was, well, that's a, an interesting way to look at it, or that's a different idea we didn't think about, or, you know, we should include this. It, it was very helpful. And I think that, you know, we're really on this productivity kick lately. This, you know, these tools are amazing. I mean, all, all these businesses that you're trying to grow your social media presence, one of the most interesting things you can do with a GPT is ask it what is the best time to post huh. something that you're working on, and it will tell you. So it will analyze data, especially now 
uh, it's not always going to be correct. It, it, correct. It, it, you know, yes. a friend of mine did describe this as uh, you know Dunning Kruger in a in a chatbot. Right. It thinks. <laughs> yeah. It thinks yes. that it is a hundred percent right, and it it yeah. it will give you answers with confidence. But it may well be strong and wrong. It does not know when it's wrong. So you have to test. And one of my favorite examples of testing is like Apple script, right? Or some kind of programming where you can say, mm -hmm. great, write me an Apple script to do this or write me, a, you know, a JavaScript on the web to do this. And then you get to go and test it. And if it doesn't work, you can go back and say, hey, by the way, thank you, but it doesn't work. Here's the error I got. And it'll say, ah, I see what I did wrong. Let me fix that. And uh, oftentimes, but not always, it will fix it correctly. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's, it's amazing, um, yeah. and that's how that's what we're doing with it. We'd love to hear what you're doing with it. Feedback at businessbrain. Uh, dot show. We are rolling up on our 500th uh, episode where we are going to take our last entries for this MacBook Air that we're giving away, and the odds are very good. Uh, and we, you know, send us a message here in the next couple of days, and we'll. Uh, Add your name to the list. We'll add your name entries. to the list. Absolutely. You get you get entered to win a MacBook Air. It's going to be wonderful. Thanks for hanging out with us for the last uh, 21 and a half minutes, folks. Make sure to check out our sponsors, Miro.com slash podcast, Shopify.com slash business brain. Keep on living that charmed life, and uh, we'll see you on Friday.